Hi, this is example number seven uh, from section 12.7. So here we have uh, the boxes travel along an, induced, an industrial convoy, right? And if a box starts from rest at A, this is my initial position, and increases its speed such that the tangential acceleration has an expression of 0 0.2 times meters over seconds. So it covers all this distance, and we are being asked to find the magnitude of the acceleration at B, at position B. So it has already covered 3 meters going in this direction, and then a circular path to B. So, what is the solution of this problem? First of all, we have to select which kind of components or coordinate system we want to use. The most appropriate here, since in the position that we are at and that we are being asked to find the acceleration, we have a circular path. We know that when we have a circular path, we have two two directions, right? So we have the tangential direction and we have the normal direction. So that acceleration that we are being asked to find is a vector expression in the tangential direction plus a normal acceleration. And if we want to find the magnitude, that will be the tangential direction, the tangential acceleration square plus the normal acceleration square. So we have to find those two components in order to find the magnitude of the acceleration at B. So let's see what we have. We actually are given that the tangential acceleration is 0 0.2 times uh, the time. But we actually see that we don't have the time. So we have to find first the time in order to have that component. And the normal acceleration is the velocity squared over the radius of curvature. We don't have the velocity either. So we have to find the velocity and we have to find the time. We do have the uh, radius of curvature because it's two meters. So let's say here, let's write B, right? Because we want to find the velocity at B. The velocity at A, which is the initial position, we know that is zero. They tell us that it starts from rest. So to find the velocity, since we have the expression of the acceleration, we can find the velocity. Remember that the acceleration is the, actually, this is not a vectorial fun because we know that this is in tangent. Uh, the direction is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. And the velocity is always tangent to the trajectory. Therefore, we have here that the derivative of the velocity is the acceleration time and we have to uh, find the limits of integration and as we see here we have the the velocity will be zero to velocity of that point b right and here will be zero to that time so here we have the velocity will be that will become velocity when we integrate those two is velocity of b minus velocity of zero which is the velocity of a that is in the initial position, they tell us that start in rest, so this is zero. And then we have the integral of this expression right here, 0 0.2 times the time, zero time. So the velocity is equal to 0 0.2 times square over 2, which is equal to 0 0.1 t squared. But we still don't have the time. So now we have the acceleration in terms of time and the velocity in terms of, of time. So what do we do to find time? So what other information that we have in the drawing? So that's always when we have unknowns, we have to see what information is given. And here we see that we have the path. So we actually have that it has covered three meters to get all the way to here, and then we have this more trajectory. So this is the whole trajectory. So how much it has uh, covered, so the uh, actual final distance we have, that will be equals to, the final distance will be equals to three plus that semicircle. As you know, the circumference of a circle is two pi r, so, so it will be 2 pi r, which is 2, divided only by 4, because we are uh, 
covering only one fourth of a semi of a circle, right? So we divided by four. So the total distance cover is equal, equals to uh, three plus pi, which is six point one four a uh, one four two meters, right? So, so how do we relate this information that we have in our drawing? So we have also that the velocity is the integral of the path, right? So we can actually integrate the, the path and we can integrate the velocity to a uh, time, right? And so here we have S zero because we start in zero and the final, which is 6.142. And here is zero to that time that we want to find. So here we integrate that, and we have, uh, this is s in zero and 6.142, and this is equals the velocity, the expression of the velocity is the integral of 0 0.1 t d d t, from zero to t. So that will be equals to 0 0.1 t squared over Oh, this is t squared, so this is 3 cubed. 3 cubed over 3, 0, and t. So finally, we have here the expression that this is 6.142 equals to 0 0.1 divided by 3, t. So from here, we can actually solve, solve for t and get t is equals to 5.690 seconds. So finally we got the time, and we already had the velocity in terms of time and the acceleration in terms of time. So now we can find our tangential component and our normal component. So let's go back and then we do that. So our tangential component will be 0 0.2 times that time that we found, right, which is equals to 5690, and our normal component is equals to the velocity that we just found right here, right, which is 0 0.1 times our time, 5.690 squared, divided by the radius of curvature, which is 2. So we have these two expressions, and then those are numbers. So now we can say from here that the acceleration at B is this expression squared. This actually have the number. Let me put it right here. The number that I got here is equals to 1 point, um, 1.38 meters per second squared and the one for normal acceleration, I have 5.242 meters per second squared. So I got those two values, and I get that this is the square root of the first one, plus the square, the square of the second one, and then the acceleration at B is equals to 5, Point three six meters over second square. And this is the solution of this problem.